وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول A questioner asked My mother passed away and I wanted to give sadaqa on her behalf recite Quran on her behalf and slaughter an animal on her behalf Will these good deeds be accepted on her behalf? I have heard lots of different opinions on this. What is the strongest opinion? Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Lahu alhamdul hasan wa thanau aljameel Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa ahdahu la sharika lah Yaqulu alhaqa wa huwa yahdi al-sabeel Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa attabi'ina lahum bi ihsanin ila yawmi al-deen amma ba'd In response to your question I say that Al-Imam Al-Nawawi Rahimahullah and Ibn Kathir they transmitted a consensus from the ulama that the righteous action of a person will reach the dead if it's one of two either a dua or a sadaqa sadaqa and dua will reach the dead and they transmitted a consensus for that and the ijma' here it's, uh, it was rooted from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and the Quran and in Usus. For example, the dua reaching the dead and even the ones who are alive is the ayah in Surah Al-Hashr, ayah 10, where Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا غْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِإِخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَا بِالْإِيمَانِ وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلًّا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الْآيَةِ In this ayah, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala tells us, those who came after, they say, our Lord, forgive us and our brothers who preceded us in faith and do not place in our hearts animosity and hate towards them. So this shows that the dua benefits the people who have passed away. That's why when we pray Salatul Janazah, we make dua for the dead. And even when the person is buried, we make dua for them after they are buried. We even make dua for them when we visit the graves. So all of that, shows that the dua reaches and it benefits the person who is dead. As for the sadaqah, the evidence for it is the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. May Allah be pleased with her and her father. And a rajulan atan nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam faqala, a man came to the Prophet. And he said to the Prophet of Allah, he said, Ya Rasulallah inna ummi iftulitat. My mother has passed away. Walam tulsi. My mother Inna ummi, my mother, if tulitat nafsuha walam tulsi. My mother passed away and she hasn't given a farewell. Wa dhunnuha law takallamat tasaddaqat. And he said, I think and I believe that if my mother was able to, if she was able to speak and talk, she would have uh, requested for sadaqa to be given on her name. Afalaha ajrun in saddaqtu anha. The man said, if I give uh, on behalf of my mother Sadaqa, will it be an act that will reach her? Will it be for her the reward? The Prophet said, Naam. Bukhari narrated in his Sahih min Hadith ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. May Allah be pleased with him and his father. And Sa'ad ibn Ubadah radiallahu ta'ala anhu tuufiyat ummuhu huwa ghaibun anha. Sa'ad ibn Ubadah's mother passed away whilst he was absent. Faqala he said, Ya Rasulallah, O Messenger of Allah, inna ummi tuufiyat wa ana ghaibun anha. My mother passed away whilst I was absent from her. in bihi anha? Will it benefit her if I give sadaqa on her behalf? The Prophet said, Naam, of course, yes. Then he said, Inni ushiduka anna ha'itil mikhrafa sadaqatun alayha. I bear witness, I use you as my witness or messenger of Allah, that my garden, al-mikhrafa, is a sadaqa for my mother. Also, Imam Muslim narrated in his sahih, in hadith Abi Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala anu anna rajulan, qala ni nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a man said to the Prophet, inna abi mata wa taraka malan wa lam yusi. My father passed away and he has not given a wasiyya, a farewell. And he has wealth he left behind. Fahal yukaffiru anhu in tasaddaq anhu. He said, fahal yukaffiru anhu in atasaddaq anhu. He said, will it expiate for him? Will it, and it would it be accepted from him if I give sadaqah on his behalf? He said, naam. 
So the scholars, they put under the sadaqa all the ibadat al-maliyah. Yani any ibadah connected to wealth, it falls under there. Yani if you give, if you pay the debt for your parent or whatever it may be, or you pay zakat or whatever, all of that will fall under there. As for the sawm and nadr and hajj and itq, fasting of the nadr and also hajj and itq, freeing a slave, there are also evidences for that as well. That they are also an exception from the statement of Allah, وَأَنْ لَيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَى So it's an exception. So nadr and hajj and itq can also reach your parent. And it also is an exception from the hadith of إِذَا مَاتَ الْإِنسَانُ إِنْ قَطَعَ عَمَلُ عَنْهُ عَمَلُهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثِ إِلَّا مَنْ صَدَقَةٍ جَارِيَةٍ أَوْ عِلْمٌ يُنْتَفَعُ بِهِ أَوْ وَلَدٍ صَالِحٍ يَدْعُوا لَهِ يعني صوم النذر and حج العتق is an, is an exception from the ayah وَأَنْ لَيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَى And it's also an exception from the hadith of the Prophet where the Prophet said if the person passed away uh, his actions, they come to an end, except three. The first one is sadaqatin jariyah, if he gives a sadaqah, or he leaves behind beneficial knowledge, or waladin salihun yad'u lah, salihin yad'u lahu, or he leaves behind a righteous child. Um, lakin, the question here is, qira'atul Qur'an, reciting Qur'an. Reciting Qur'an does not reach the dead. And the reason for that is four reasons. The first one is, فَلَمْ يَرِدْ فِي جَوَازِهِ نَصٌ There's no evidence for it. And the asal is, the asal is that everyone only gets rewarded for their own actions. وَأَنْ لَيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَى Everyone only gets rewarded for the actions that they do. And also, Allah says, إِنَّا نَحْنُ نُحْيِي الْمَوْتَى وَنَكْتُوا مَا قَدَّمُوا وَآثَارَهُمْ So you only get rewarded for what you put forward and what you left behind. Your own actions. Okay, and also the hadith I mentioned, which is uh, uh, So this is not from the person, يعني, there is no evidence to make reciting of the Quran reach the dead. There is no nas text to say it's permissible or it will reach the person. Also, Lam Yakun min Salaf. It wasn't from the norms of the Salaf, the pious predecessors. Right, to gift their actions to the dead. This wasn't a, something they, they, were, uh, they did when it came to the Quran. Also, Ibn Kathir rahimahullah, mentioned the statement of Imam al-Shafi'i that he mentioned the recitation of the Quran falls under the ayah وَأَنْ لَيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَادِ And Shafi'i mentioned, as Ibn Kathir mentioned, and Imam Shafi'i mentioned that the recitation of the Quran will not reach the person. And the fourth reason is Babul Qurubat Yuqtasaru fi ala nusus wala yutasarrafu fihi bi anwa'i al aqisati wal ara, as Shafi'i mentioned. Shafi'i said that. When it comes to getting closer to Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala with things, we have to stick to what the text mentioned. We can't use aqisa, qiyas, and ara and opinions. We can't compare recitation of the Qur'an to, for example, sadaqah or dua or na. Each ibadah needs evidence. The ayah is general. Any evidence that's exception, we will accept it. But we can't do a qiyas for one ibadah to the other. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are both free from it. Subhanak Allah wa bihamdi ashadu wa la ilaha illallah astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi. If you have any questions you'd like to see answered as part of this series, then you can email us at questions at amau.org.